What's up guys, Van Zeeven here from Designs by Zephyr. This is episode 16.9 of Java 2D Game Engine Development. Today we're going to be fixing up two different things. Uh, the first thing I already have open, it took me a couple tries to simulate this, so, but I've actually got it open right here. You'll see that we have this screen, which is the original server, um, and it is running fine, but when I open a second one under the name Bob, we have this possibility to get a concurrent modification exception, and what that is, is this exception right here. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. But the second thing we're going to be taking a look at is we're actually going to clean up their direction values. So when you join a server or when you move around, um, you're actually going to update your location. I can't show you that because Bob's kind of frozen right now. Um, but let's fix up this exception first. So what is a concurrent modification exception? Now what happens is it means that, um, as you see here, we have this entities uh, loop. And we're looping through the entities and ticking each entity in return. But while we're looping through this, a new entity um, for instance, in this case, Bob, is being appended to this, this object. So the object's getting both read and written to at the same time. And in that case, um, the JRE doesn't really know what to do. It's kind of just like, uh, well, like, what do you want me to do here? I don't, I, don't, I don't really know. So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that this uh, entities list can only be accessed by one thing at a time. And if it does get accessed by two things simultaneously, it will put the first one um, it, it'll execute the first one and then it'll put the second one on kind of like a buffer and it'll queue it up and then it'll run it after. Um, so that's what we're going to do. Now this isn't the op most optimal solution because um, it's possible that there's a few nanosecond delay or even a few milliseconds delay um, for the second one to get run. But uh, so if you're, if you're doing something that, that's a, that needs extreme, extreme efficiency, then this is probably not the way to go about uh, solving this. But this is the easiest and most common way to. So what we're going to do is, as I explained earlier, we need to change it so that this thing can only be accessed one at a time. Um, there's actually a word for that. It's called an intrinsic lock. And it's a very common thing in, the, in uh, programming. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to kill off the server because we know what the issue is now. And I've explained it to you guys. And I'm going to kill off this second client here as well. And we're going to switch back into our Java workspace. So there's two different ways that we could do that. We could go right here and we could just type S-Y-N-C-H-R-O-N-I-Z-E-D, type synchronized, and then we synchronize entities, and then just wrap it in colons here. And you'll see that that does pop up as valid. And that will um, synchronize it here. But for this to be effective, we would need to find every instance of this entities and actually wrap it with this synchronized uh, thing here. We don't really want to do that because that's kind of inefficient. Because you see there's a bunch of them here that we'd have to change. I don't really want to do that. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to actually make a function for it. So let's just clean this up. And we're going to go right here. And we're going to say public void or public um, list entity get entities. Okay, and that's going to return this dot entities. Okay, now to make this a synchronous class, because this is just like any other uh, getter here, we just put that keyword right here. So we go synchronized, and that'll synchronize that function. So now wherever we use entities here like this, uh, we can just call this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a control find, and we're actually going to just replace, um, hmm. let's just do this for now. Uh, get Entities. We're just going to replace all. That should do that, but then we need to go back up to the right here. Do that. And import it. Did I spell it wrong? What's going on? Oh, I changed the name of it up here as well. Uh, let's see. Replace this one. That's the simplest way to do that. And that should solve everything. What's going on down here? What's going on? Oh, I spelled this wrong. Get. There. There we go. So that solves all that. And we just need to actually clean up some function names here. Um, but this is a lot simpler. Uh, okay. And I think that's it. Yes. Perfect. So that should solve that issue. Um, so we're actually going to verify that this is solved. There may be another place 
that we are accessing entities, but I don't think it's public. So, yes it is. Let's change it to private and check where else it's being looked at. Uh, let's Oops. And save it. If there's any errors on here, then that means that we can't do that. And there isn't, so we're good. So now, let's actually run it. And I'm actually going to run a few of them right now to verify that this is solved. So I will be back in a few seconds if I come up with this error again. Okay, so back after running about 20 uh, different instances of this. And we, we seem to be good. Um, if it pops up again, we can see what's going on but uh, it should be solved so that was pretty simple um, next what we need to take a look at is the move packet now we want to send some extra data with this move packet because right now we just have the x and y coordinate um, there are two things that i want to address here uh, one thing something that i could have done last episode that i didn't do and i'll explain that in a second um, and the other thing is going to be pertaining to how we could address this in a much simpler fashion but we need to take a look at two different things for that so um, Last episode we did the login packet, and you see that I sent this x and y coordinates over. And something that I'm surprised that nobody's uh, pointed out to me is why we didn't just use the move packet. Why didn't we send a login packet and then a move packet directly after that? Um, the only reason that I didn't do that is because I'd rather only send one packet than two. There's not really any real reason why I didn't do that. I could have done that. It's a valid solution to solving the issue last episode but I just felt like appending this information here so that you guys can kind of see how you do it um, it's kind of something that that's pretty modular once you know the base of how to do it and this is just kind of to to reaffirm your understanding of how it's done more than anything um, yeah so the move packet now there are two different ways that we could have handled moving and I'll explain the inefficiencies in both of them or yeah both of them right now um, what we could have done is if we go into the mob class, I believe, you'll see that we have the move direction, if they're moving, uh, their steps, their speed, we don't really need to take, but we could. Um, but it's mainly just these three variables that we would need. Now, what we could have done last episode is if you take a look down here, you'll see that the move function does take care of all of them. And what we could have done in the player class is instead of just sending this packet move with their current x location and their current y location, we could have just sent um, the the value here in the x slot or the y slot being a 1, 0, or negative 1, similar to when you're pressing a key. Uh, it's either 0, 1, or negative 1. And we could have done that, and it would have taken care of all that, and then returned move based on if that was a valid move or not. One thing that's wrong with this is if you do this move, and let's say um, some, something's going on with your bandwidth and your friend's connected to you, and his ping's not great to you, and a couple packets get lost, what will happen is those little moving steps that you attempted to move here will be lost. And yes, we can do redundancy against that, and we will in the future. Um, there's going to be a few episodes dedicated to implementing some redundancy to make sure that the server knows if the client's moved and stuff like that. But it, the fact of the matter is, they would just get out of sync. And a much easier way to solve that at the moment is to send your coordinate instead. So even if those packets get lost, all that's going to happen is your player's going to jump from being say right here to over here as opposed to as opposed to just being here and then being here instead for taking only one step instead of the three or however many you actually took so that that's the only reason why we did that um, so now let's get on to sending some more data and what we're going to do is this method we actually need to append some data to our move packet now this is going to cost a little more on the bandwidth token because we're going to be sending a little bit more data across the um, server and stuff like that but I would much prefer doing that at this point in time. Uh, we can always change that up later on if we find it to be an issue. So now what kind of data do we actually need to send here? We're going to need to convert everything into its lowest possible form so that the smallest amount of space that we can get. So we have an int here, we have a boolean, and we have an int. So the ints are easy to take care of because they're just a number. Um, the boolean, what we're going to do is we're going to use a 1 or a 0 to determine whether or not it's true or false. 1 will be true, 0 will be false. So let's actually do that right now. Um, so let's take the move packet here, and I'm actually just going to copy these three. And we're going to go to the move packet. And let's just paste them down here. And we're going to make them private. Like that. So there's that. And we're actually going to append the data here as well. So we're going to say int num steps. Uh, boolean is moving. And int moving 
and let's set that up at top num steps equals num steps this dot is moving uh, moving and this dot moving dir is equal oops is equal to moving dir so there's all that uh, now we're going to need to parse out some more data here and what we're going to do is we're just going to say this dot num steps is equal to integer dot parse int data array and this is going to be at three because we're just going to keep incrementing on top of this actual um, array here and then the next one after num steps is the moving function so we're going to say this dot is moving is equal to um, we're going to say integer dot parse oops dot parse int data array at four and we're going to say equal equals one so what that's oops one not tick. Um, so what that's going to do is if this is equal to 1, it'll put a true here, and if it's 0 or anything other than 1, it'll put a false here. So that's exactly what we wanted, and that's a simple way to do that. And then we're going to say this dot moving dir is equal to integer dot parse int data array at 5. So you'll see that we have quite a few new variables to add in here, and that's not really an issue. So let's go down here and actually make some getters for them. Um, actually, one way to make some quick and easy getters, and I'll show you this right now, if you right-click your package, and you go to Source, and then you go to Generate Getters and Setters, you can actually click on what you want. So if we want one for these three, for example, we're going to say, is moving, get moving dir, get num steps, and we're going to insert it after, at the very bottom, and just leave that and hit OK. And it'll actually generate these three for you. So now you see we have get num steps, is moving, and moving dir. So it's a very simple way to uh, generate them without typing all that code out. Um, there's probably a shortcut, I don't know. Um, now we need to append the data to this get data function here. So what we're going to do, as we did before, is put a comma and then put this dot oops uh, this dot num steps plus comma. Oops. Now we need to do the is moving. So let's just uh, let's do a little more efficient way of doing this because remember we need to send a one or a zero here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say is moving. Um, then we put a, a question mark here. And what this is going to do is it's going to perform a mini if statement. Now it's going to say if the first ve if the first uh, boolean expression is true, uh, then we use the question mark, and then we're going to say then what are we going to do? We're going to put a one there. Else, and to signify else, you use a colon, and then we're going to say zero. What that's going to do again is dependent on this boolean expression, it's going to output either the one or the zero. It's just a little quick way of doing that. Uh, just tips for you guys, so you don't actually have to do. A giant if statement, which are kind, of, which would look kind of big here, uh, and then we're just going to say is this dot moving dir. So there's all that, all that data is being sent. Now we just need to edit the player. So let's add those in here. So we're going to say this dot, um, what was it? This dot num steps. This dot is moving, and this dot moving dir. We could also send some things from the player in, like. Um, swimming, we could send that as well, but that's kind of handled already because uh, we're handling it down here instead. So that's not really an issue. Okay, so now we need to actually handle the move in the server here, and what we're actually going to do is we need to make some setters for those variables um, because those variables don't actually exist. So let's go into mob here, and we're going to just generate some setters as I showed you with the getters. So we're going to right click, go to source, go to generate getters and setters, and we're going to do uh, num steps moving dir and is moving okay and we are going to put them after get name and there we go so there's the getters actually we didn't need the getters we needed the setters my bad <laughs> uh, let's do that so num steps set num steps uh, moving dir and you. And we're actually going to generate them after get moving dir. Just put them all at the bottom. So set num steps, set moving, set moving dir. So there's that. Um, so let's go into the server here and let's actually set that. So this dot connected players dot get at index. And actually I kind of want to make this a little more efficient right now because this is going to repeatedly get the same one. So we're actually going to change that here. We're going to say player mp player oops mp player is equal to that and then we're just gonna say right here we're gonna say player.x 
And for this one, player.y. And for this one, player dot. Now we're going to say set moving is equal to packet dot is moving. Player dot set moving direction is equal to packet dot get moving direction. And player dot set num steps is equal to packet dot get num steps. Okay, so that'll update the internal uh, function here. Now we need to handle it in the client as well. So let's go over to the client and change that. And I should actually be doing it here, yeah. So we need to go here and we need to say packet dot get. Um, let's do num steps first here. Packet dot is moving and packet dot get moving dir. So these this is going to throw an issue and that's okay because we're going to go into the level right now and clean that up. So in the level, uh, we got to go all the way down to the move player function here, and we're going to say player mp player is equal to oops player is equal to this dot get entities dot get at index. Okay, and why is that? What's that doing? Oh, casting. There. Okay, cool. And then right here player.x and right here I'm just going to delete that whole line y is equal to y player.set moving is equal to forgot to add these arguments here uh, so int num steps is that first? yeah um, boolean is moving int moving dir so down here player.set moving is moving Player dot set num steps num steps and player dot set moving dir moving dir. So there is all that, and now if we run it, everything should be running as we want it to. So let's go over to this. Let's open up the game and we're gonna run the server. Name is Van Zeeben. And we're going to move our guy over to this little thing. Run up the second instance here. Okay, and bring that over there for you guys. No, and your name's Bob. So now I see Bob's connection and Van Zeeben's connected. And if I move Van Zeeben over, you'll see that he now is moving with direction. So we do have that, and that is all nice and dandy. And if I do the same thing on Bob, you'll see that Bob moves around with direction. So that's that, and you'll see he does walk as well, which is very, very nice. So that's everything that we need to do. Um, I'm actually going to do one last thing, and I'm going to get rid of this... Uh, text here because I'm kind of sick of seeing the spam of so-and-so's moved. So that was up here, I believe. Oh uh, yeah, right here. Let's get rid of that because we don't need to see it anymore. So there's that. Um, that has been this episode here. Uh, we solved quite a few things. Uh, feel free to take a look at the next episode and uh, check back with us. So you guys have a good day. This has been Van Zeeben and I shall see you guys next time.